Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Brain Muffin at the Movies. And here are the reviews of Wonder Woman 1984. Starting to trickle out onto the interweb since it's going to be released in theaters and HBO Max. Uh, I don't see it doing well uh, at all, but uh, people will blame it on the virus. But I, I, look, the first movie was mediocre, and um, it, it shined so well, that one and Aquaman. Aquaman was better. But they were still both kind of just mediocre because all the other DCE movies are just so bad. And uh, but yeah, if you compare them to Marvel movies, they you know, they're really bad. So uh, Wonder Woman, uh, also known as Diana Prince, is one of the most dynamic of DC's mainstay comic uh, characters. But you'd never know it watching Wonder Woman 1984. The sequel has almost everything going for it. Its empathetic predic- uh, <laughs> predecessor. Empathetic is uh, likely the most beloved and critically successful of the slate of beleaguered. I, I don't know. I, I think people like Aquaman a little bit better. Um, it's time skipping story offered a way to expand the hero, a superhero genre, usual uh, plot beats, which was desperately needed and arrived uh, buoyed by an excellent cast. Um, the cast was okay. Okay. Gal is not a good Wonder Woman, period. She's not a good actress and she's not Wonder Woman. She's on Amazon. So all she has is looks. That's it. Perhaps it's lopsided uh, universe was not perfect. There were lackluster villains that that's saying something and a noticeable absence of racial diversity. And, <laughs> and since you, oh, what? Who cares? It's a comic book. Oh my God. Uh, should they have recast? I mean, you had, um, you say you have the Amazonians, which are supposed to be Greek, but now they're Israeli because of Gaul. Uh, you had an Englishman. Uh, well, you had an American playing in one day, an American in England. You had some Englishmen. Uh, when they go into um, uh, the war zone, I guess that's in France, they, uh, they've they got an American Indian. They've got uh, a Middle Eastern man. I don't know how much more diversity you want. It's World War One. It was pretty much the Germans and the French fighting, okay? That's it. You're not going to have a bunch of you know ethnically diverse people running around the trenches in France. Uh, the disappointingly sequel, the disappointing sequel highlights that not only the dire state of the live action superhero genre film, but the dire state of Hollywood filmmaking as a whole. Uh, I feel like I skipped a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, oh, I did. Uh, jump from okay to 1980s DC. Blah blah blah. Uh, this is a long article, so I'm not going to read everything. People don't need to hear me talking for 20 minutes. Um, in Patty Jenkins' color coded color candy colored rendition of the '80s, that's the thing too. As I've been noticing, it's is that gl- that's not 1984. Um, but the clothes the clothes are pretty close. But by choice and circumstance, uh, she begins to develop a friendship with coworker named Barbara Minerva. Okay, Kristen Wiig, and um, I'm guessing they probably don't do much with this relationship at all, like they should. Diana's life uh, as both a museum creator, curator and undercover superhero is disrupted by the arrival of what is best described as a magic rock. At first, it unknowingly uh, grants Diana her great desire to see Steve T- uh, Trevor return to life, sort of. Um, the easily frazzled and comical clumsy Barbara gets some fringe benefits, too. Fringe benefits, uh, she wishes upon the rock to be like, the, okay, so uh, suddenly achieving a power and confidence beyond her wildest dreams. But uh, things take a turn when a wannabe oil tycoon, Maxwell Lord, this is the orange man bad, Pedro strolls into the story with a rank ego and daddy issues, of course. Uh, Barbara, whose story as Cheetah is well told in Greg Ruka, uh, Nicola, 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 yeah, Scott in Lee, I know I'm terrible with names. Liam Sharp's run of the character that kicked off in 2016 transforms from nascent uh, friend to villain all too quickly. Meanwhile, the Magic Rock ends up getting the stage for major global unrest. Okay, setting the stage for major global unrest. Okay. Um, What has attracted me to this character over the years, the femininity of her mythos and how it emphasized the maternal, how her strength is conveyed in both fight scenes and their emotional exchanges feels poorly developed in this utter mess of a plot. I I would say I... The first one had a decent plot, but I think that same thing is 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 one of the one of many problems with the first one. Um, uh, the first one was just kind of meh, and uh, they really, you know, well, I, I understand Wonder Woman of the nineteen seventies that I grew up with in the early eighties has changed drastically in the, even in the comics, but uh, they they really missed it. Uh, superhero films. Uh, to often rely on mystical items to fuel their narratives, but a magical rock that grants wishes like a gleaming monkey's paw. It's hackneyed uh, as it is still the dialogue, as it is the stilted dialogue that on unra- unra- can't read 
unravels the story begin with, starting with Diana's voiceover outlining a thinly drawn explanation of, of her Amazon race. Yeah, I, I actually saw that before I watched, um, start reading this. And because that is on YouTube, it's it's like the opening scene and then the two tr- some short trailers. Um, we don't need to go back there. We don't need more setup from M- MS, uh, is it MS Thera? Um, of course, they've changed it. You know, someone's keeping a track of the geography. And, and this happens in, in a lot of movies. This was like when I saw Conan, this destroyer, I was like, this feels like a different world than the first one completely. And then I went back and watched um, uh, Conan the Barbarian, the one with Schwarzenegger. And part of it was because they didn't want to R, they wanted it, they were going for PG 13 or something like that. But yeah, it does feel a completely different universe. And uh, I'm not surprised if that happens here. And that seems to be happening with Themyscira, which is fine. You know, did we, we had some of that even with uh, the Thor, uh, with a uh, Thor movies. Sure, uh, Goodout and Pine once again have a charming chemistry, but his character's return from the dead, in which he basically takes over some poor guy's body, <laughs> sparks more questions about the gaps in logic. And then there's the utter sexlessness, especially a uh, damning reminder of the way this genre fails to take into account one of the most beautiful aspects of being human. Um, okay, well, probably, yeah, this is one of the things that never fully made sense in the original. Uh, even when uh, the TV show, the late seventies, early eighties, she falls for a human. Um, we kind of get this in the Lord of the Rings books too, with elf, uh, you know, you have an elf and a half elf. Um, this is, I think makes more sense when they kind of start some writers pair her with Superman a little bit more. I think that makes a little bit of sense that Superman Lois Lane makes a, even less Superman gives up his powers. That's probably the time it makes any sense there too. Instead, 1984, Diana's non-erotic yearning for Steve has become the entirety of her identity. Why? She doesn't miss her Amazon sisters, whom she can never see again. Um, you know, why, oh, why doesn't she miss? She misses some more. It's been over a century, and she still hasn't moved on from Steve. Yeah, um, yeah, it has. You know, that would have been 1917, 1918. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's 100 years. Um yeah, yeah, I don't really have an answer for that. I, I think that's that's correct. Uh, yeah, her she kind of found love. I guess that's what you know got her to get her powers or whatever. Um, but yeah, she hasn't been back now. How many survived from um, Justice League? Well, this would have been before then. So this is before. Uh, all right, this is another prequel. So this is before we have Steppenwolf show up and the mother boxes and everything else. So so yeah, it's it's kind of odd. Something deeply sad and predictable about a, a female superhero so tied to a single man she's willing to lose her powers for him. Uh, I, yeah, that trope both ways. Um, I kind of got it in Superman, but then, um, you know, the Superman 2. Uh, then it was a kind of a turnaround as fair play. Uh, but, yeah, they did this with several characters in the uh, WB, um, you know, the CW shows, the Arrowverse. And, uh, they, I think they did it on all of them where people either gave up what they were doing or gave up their powers. The men gave them up for women. And I was just like, that means they don't accept you for who you are. And I have a real problem with that. And, um, it's one thing if someone decides, Hey, you know, I want to go start a family. Uh, I've been almost killed too many times. I get that, but, uh, I don't get it for just the sake of, you know, that's, like I said, the, the person's not accepting for who you are. So why are you giving up a very significant portion of who you are uh, to be with them? Romance has the potential to be heartwarming and expensive, expansive in superhero stories. It does, especially, um, I would say love in general, especially f- family love. This is one of the things that makes Hawkeye's, uh, you know, fall because all, all of his family disappears um, at the snap because he's not there when, when they're fighting. And, uh, that really helps of his down, you know, his, his road to darkness, basically romance was okay, but a freeze, uh, but it just feels, uh, claustrophobic. I don't, uh, even expand on the turn of the, uh, of the in ripped from a Hallmark movie, Christmas (laughs) visuals and all, 
Oh, that's yeah, that's that has become a big trope. Jenkins, who brought a fresh eye to the uh, fight choreography and styles in the original Wonder Woman, I don't think she did. Seems more uh, seems now almost disenchanted with the world she's helped bring to life. It's cheerfully lit, and the 1980s uh, period demands as the 1980s period demands. It helps if you read the words that are there. I, maybe I don't sit closer because I don't have my glasses on. But it's neither visually intriguing uh, or beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Wonder Woman 1984 overwhelms the senses, confuses large S with wonder. The action is hobbled uh, by poor blocking. I, I will say this, and a strange spatial, a strange spatial dynamic makes it so that you're never exactly sure where characters are in space of the scene. I picked up on that in the trailer, uh, especially when she's whipping. It's like that lasso. It goes from being 10 feet long to 10 miles long. And you, it's, it's insane. And, um, uh, and then with the, the opening that they, the show that they're, the, the, uh, Amazons are doing all kinds of crazy things. And again, yeah, you can't tell. It's like, you think something's re- real close and then it ends up being far away and vice versa. I don't know if, uh, that kind of stuff was, was meant to be 3d. And so when it gets translated to 2d, it doesn't look good but if you had the glasses on and everything maybe it looks better i don't know but i do agree with that that is what i've noticed in 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 the stuff that's been released it's like wait a minute it is yeah and like there's one where she lassos uh, an airplane she's on the ground and there's a plane flying over like at at least several thousand feet so at least a mile or two and yet somehow that lasso just magically stretches and off she goes it's very strange um Especially egregious is an underwater sequence involving Barbara and Diana in which Cheetah, who who should feel fearsome, is undercut by uneven practical effects and chintzy CGI. In close-ups throughout the movie, Cheetah's face and body feel poorly thought out and conjure, uh, conjure not, not even a sliver of the feral proudness of the character. I, I haven't seen any of that, so I don't know. Uh, in medium and long shots, particularly during a close closing fight between the women there's a profound weightlessness to the blows owing to how cheetah's body is framed yeah i also noticed this in some of the marvel stuff especially when they you know there's times when it feels like there's two people punching each other and other times it's just whether they punch and fluff uh full cool or is it fluff punching fluff uh, cool touches to jenkins uh filmmaking aesthetic and intriguing spin on the invisible jet Diana's increased reliance on her last, so her new ability to fly, but overall the promise of action sequence. Yeah, and th- that apparently was added in the in the comics and in the the um, cartoon that was on television. She didn't fly when when I was paying attention, but you know I haven't really been paying attention to comics for a long, long time. In the end, the actors can't save the story. Uh, Wig really, really tries to. She vamps it up uh, with Pascal. Uh, each of them going for arc performances. Arch performances. Uh, performances the script can't match. Um, that was one of my, my big problems with almost all of the, the Warner, the, the Warner brother movies, the Batman, the script's been horrible and, um, just very narrow, very, very poorly written. Um, you know, that was one of the surprises I had with, uh, what was the Marvel movie? Uh, Dr. Strange. My wife will watch that one. She liked it. And I was like, well, I'll, you know, cause I was just going to skip them. Cause I was so bored with them because the scripts were getting so paper thin. Oh, it's the same thing again. Just swap out two characters and then, you know, carbon copy. But Dr. Strange felt different. Ant-Man was a little different. Ant-Man, the wasp was just a carbon copy. Um, and, and so predictable. I am not, I don't even give two craps about the new Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. I really don't. Plot grows more entangled and confusing by the minute as the film's central relationships are overshadowed by unnecessary global globe trotting, flashy role reversals and poor world building. Yep. Again, it sounds like, um, in many ways they're, they're trying to catch up to Marvel. DC's trying to catch up to Marvel. And so, what it's starting to, I'm starting to wonder if just in many ways, like Justice League, which should have been probably three movies, this may have, this is two movies uh, put together. Story does nothing to explain exactly what Diana has been doing in her years since World War One, or why she decided to ignore intervening global affairs. Yep, um, I'm not. See, this is where I think some her go, maybe even going back to the island for a little bit uh, to recover from her, the shock of what uh, the outside world was really like. Uh, and some of the things that, you know, deal confront her mother on, um, that type of thing probably would have been a good piece to have in the movie. And in many ways, um, kind of like, uh, was it, um, 
Well, Spock, I guess that is the Star Trek. So Spock's on, on Vulcan and he's dealing with some things when, and then he joins the crew in the first Star Trek movie. And so they give a little bit of backstory of what's going on. And in the comics, Diana forms uh, a curious bond with Barbara, whose work as an archaeologist and obsession with the Amazons adds an intriguing layer to their friendship. A little of that transfers to the film. The, the sequel continues the franchise uh, earnest streak, but without a stronger narrative, it feels unearned and worse yet calculated. Yeah, quite possibly. Uh, Gal Gadot uh, admittedly remains a warm presence in the franchise, and Chris Pine does his best with the story. It makes sense that Steve and Diana would come um, become positioned against Barbara and Maxwell with this Okay, with this murky, with this murkily defined goals, oh, his murkily defined goals of domination. Again, this, this, the two villain nonsense. I don't know why, and it's something I've seen in the DC movies, uh, even with the Batman. So the first Batman, you had Joker, and it was it. And after that, you had two villains because you had to have like two origin stories always. And I thought it was stupid. And they sort of got away from it, but then just, well, the Dawn of Justice had two bad guys, essentially. You had Batman and Superman fighting each other, and then you had. Um, whatever that was, it showed up. I don't remember. I've, I've seen that movie once and it was so horrible. Uh, I want intrigue. I want grace uh, with the okay. game. So anyway, is a turning point in the history of Hollywood's business. So Wonder Woman 1984 uh, is a turning point in the history of Hollywood's business with Warner Brothers banking big on the hope that film's Christmas Day release will be a push. Uh, it's merely a good streaming service. HBO Max uh, needs and least at least, but the film is in it is in indicative of the larger pitfalls of an aging superhero genre. I will agree there. I think it's beyond played out. Marvel had an awesome 11 year run, 22 movies, but my goodness, can we take a break? Um, watching Wonder Woman 1984, I couldn't help but think of the utter ho uh, hollowness of representation and how corporations have adopted the language and posture of political movements in order to sell back to us a vacant and rendition of the change we really want. Um, you can't have it both ways. Now, I, I will part with the author here. Uh, I think the, the woke narrative is two-thirds of the problem. Uh, that's all they're concentrating on. They're not concentrating on a story. How about you just give us a good story? And if it's a black superhero, great. If it's a woman, great. Who cares? Make give us a good story first. Um, they have recast, especially in the DC. Now, Marvel's done a little bit, but in the DC universe, they have recast, surprisingly, um, perhaps not. So many redheads have been recast as black characters, some have been uh, race, uh, gender swapped. Um, and uh, I don't think it's, it's good. The, and the stories are horrible. I mean, the stories the, give us a good story first. You know, there are people like superhero, you know, I'm not like Batman or Superman or any of these other people. I mean, but this isn't good film. Uh, okay. Okay. Where am I? Especially when the place, re uh, the place re reflections of us, us on the big screen. Okay. As more and more exciting directors get caught up in the gears of this uh, mammoth genre, I can't help but reflect on how their talents would be better utilized elsewhere. If only Hollywood gave them real control over stories. Yeah. But um yeah so i know there were comments and i think i skipped down to them it, it puts them in i didn't do that right uh so i i don't know what angelica jade bestein best bastian bastian uh thought of the first one it looks like they, they possibly like the first one but it sounds like the blinders have come off i mean the first one i liked a little bit i liked it better than the other dc movies um until aquaman uh, my wife was pretty much there and she was a Wonder Woman, you know, she was a fan back in the day and um, like the originals and everything else, you know, the, the, the TV show and, and even that, the, the way that they did, you know, when I watched some of that, the Wonder Woman, the first season was okay. The second season just gets pathetic. But again, without good writing, it doesn't matter. You know, one of my favorite TV shows when I was a teenager was the A-Team and Man, that second season is hard to watch because the writing was just horrible. And that was on purpose. NBC, it was a very popular show, and NBC didn't like that. And they kept sending just, you know, lower tier staff to do the writing. And then near the end, they got, and one of the best episodes is actually, uh, unfortunately, the last one when they got some good writers. And, um, and that makes a huge difference. So it sounds to me like, um, you know, Wonder Woman 1984 is probably going to be more meh, which is what we got from the first one. And uh, so I'm not surprised and uh, by this article and I'm sure other reviews that are more honest, you know, people are, have the right to be disappointed. I mean, they have a right to say, Hey, this is what I think should happen or why I want to happen. And when it doesn't, 
um, you know, not boycotts and all that stuff, but hey, you know, just express, express your opinion. And people, in the, some people in the comments agree, some people in the comments don't. Um, and I'm sure there'll be, but I don't think this movie is going to make very much money. And and uh, uh, with the virus going around still, and, and a lot of places still closed, I mean, I don't have HBO anything, so you know, um, I don't know anybody who has HBO Max, so I don't know who's going to see this. I think this will go quickly into the rental section. Um, it's just going to be a big loss. And I, I think it would have been decent if none of this other nonsense was going on. Um, but it, it's one of these movies that will have a, would have a huge opening. Okay. That first weekend is going to be, would be huge. And that's what people will be talking about. And then it'll fall very, 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 very rapidly. And, uh, what little goodwill DC had for the DC uh, from the fans from the DCEU will be gone. Um, because if this is the kind of movie they're going to make, The Flash is going to be horrible. And uh, and who knows what further Justice League movie we may get. I really just want them to, I just want them to just kind of stop. It sounds like Henry Cavill doesn't be Superman anymore. Um, and uh, Ben Affleck is not as out as Batman. The Flash might get replaced. I'd say just stop. Let's just do some smaller movies. Uh, maybe a little, a few small origin type stories. No big spectacles. Let it rest. Kind of reboot it. Uh, recast everything, fire everybody involved and uh, hire some better people and start with some much better writing and then go from there. And uh, that, cause I think the only thing, you know, the only casting I've actually liked of all of the movies I've seen in the DCEU is Chris Pine. Steve Trevor uh, was a decent cast and um, that's about it. I, I guess Brigitte, is it uh, Connie Nielsen was a fairly good cast too, because um, she pulls off the Amazon warrior. She's tall, has some, you know, has broad shoulders and has some muscle to her. It's not a muscle woman, but uh, she has. There's a belief there, and uh, especially an aging warrior. Um, I don't know if anyone else uh, has been cast very well. I think Affleck as Batman was a very poor choice. Um, I've not. You know, Henry Cavill as Superman is okay. Um, Amy Adams as uh, Lois Lane was very bad, um, which I think why she suddenly is not in any of the movies. And then, um, yeah, and Gal is, and then, and then changing Aquaman. I mean, yeah, okay, you can make him uh, Polynesian. I mean, that probably was a good cast too if you're gonna race swap Aquaman to an uh, Asiatic, if you will. Um, and then uh, what's his face for flash? <laughs> He's so unforgettable. I don't remember his name. Um, is, was ho- absolutely horrible. Grant, uh, they should have had Grant come from the TV show. They really, really should have. Uh, he's a decent flash in the skinny flash syndrome. I'm still having to, you know, skinny flash is really, <laughs> it just, uh, I don't know if I buy it. And, uh, and then of course the TV shows have skin, skinny Superman, which makes even less sense. Um, you know, when they had, um, Brandon, uh, Roth as uh, Superman in one of the crossovers that was awesome and you could see how much bigger he really is and it <laughs> it was awesome so uh, I probably I don't know if I'll see, I mean when I'll see this I'll probably see it at some point um, definitely not gonna see it in theaters and nothing around me is open and uh, not gonna see HBO Max so maybe if it they open up the coffers and let it stream on Amazon or Netflix or something then I'll probably check it out but anyway uh, let me know what you think of Angelica's uh, writing do you like her or not like her you think that that this is um, you know unfair is it fair? Is it kind of blinders have fallen off and they're really seeing that, you know, the first movie wasn't really that good. It's just that everything else in the DCU at the, up to that point was crap. And, um, and so it was the shiniest turd in the box <laughs> and, and we'll, but we'll see who knows what December will bring. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much and goodbye. All right, is it working? <clears throat> I know without the arm, it, it's just different. All right, three, two, one.